Okay, so um, let me just get the slides open here. All right, guys, so as I said, welcome to the Computer Programming 143 Review Lecture. This is Lecture 26, and we'll be looking at um, primarily at binary file handling. So if you guys can recall from last week's lecture, we looked at ASCII file writing and reading. So in, in that is, it was basically text files that we could um, open in a particular mode, for example, an update mode or um, a amend mode or a write mode. And depending on that mode, it did certain things with the text file. It either replaced its contents in total or it updated its contents. So if there was already stuff written to it, um, an amend would just add more content to that, right? So that's how we wrote ASCII files. But what we also did is we could read ASCII files. And if you guys can remember, so yeah, so the big thing with that was it's you can open that file in a text editor as well and you could see its content. So if we just very quickly, let me see if I've got my, my, my code from last week open. So I am going to um, just look here. I'm going to close this part over here. it and so essentially what my code did here is I had a main I had a file name that I, that is basically just a character array it was assigned some random value over here and then I called a content I wrote I called a function called write content to file and what write content to file did is it after initializing a file pointer and remember in the last uh, set of slides that should have been around lecture 25, what we did is we said that, that every file that you access is located on the, on the hard drive. And the hard drive is a form of secondary storage. Any file, to be able to manipulate it during the course of your program, that file needs to get a pointer. And that pointer is of a specific type called file. Capital letter, all capital letters file. And this essentially defines um, yeah, an uh, entry into the file control block that specifies um, certain aspects about the file, its size, how it's stored and things. But you need this pointer to that file in order to manipulate it when, you've got, when, when your program executes. Okay, so over here we just defined some dummy content and <clears throat> Here we're going to open. We opened our text file. We gave it the pointer, uh, the file name, and we said we want to open it in write mode. And my pointer came back. If it was null, there was an issue with the file opening. Otherwise, I could write my my dummy content into my file using, for example, the f printf routine over here, and then I returned. Similarly, when I read the file, I also had. To, I used a function called fopen, but now I specified that I'm going to open my file in read mode. Again, this fopen would return an issue if, you, if it could not open the, um, the file. Otherwise, we just read the content of that file, there's a lot of uncomment lines, using, for example, an fscanf um, routine over here. Okay, so that's, and at the end, and very important, I think, just for the practical as well, remember when you're finished with the file handling, you need to close the file again using this F close specifier over here. Okay, so that's more or less what we looked at last week. So what we're gonna do now is we are still in this chapter 11 of file processing, but we are going to look at binary files. Now, binary files are really nice, but okay, so once part of binary files, is you can't read them as easily as text files. Benefit of using that is think information is stored much more efficiently in a binary file. Um, apart from the fact that you cannot read it directly as a human, but you can obviously write code to read that file and print out its content. So, um, so before, 
we go into the nitty-gritty of how to manipulate, how to write and read these binary files, let's first look at what the, um, the type of information is that we give this file, okay? And we call that the data hierarchy. So, in the data hierarchy, on, and this is actually in, in computers, the smallest bit of information is called a bit. And it can either have a value of a zero or a one. When we then group these bits, we can group them in packets of eight, and then we call that a byte. And the byte is the smallest amount of memory that we need to store something. For example, a character, or a, example, a decimal digit, letter, and any special symbols. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Now, when we group these bytes together, this information, we call that a field. Now, for example, a field could be your name. But we can also record... Um, we can also group these related fields together, and we call that a record, okay? So, for example, in our computer programming, in our lingo that we've been using so far, this would be representative of a struct, or later on you're going to see fits nicely into the object-oriented oriented paradigm called a class. So, <clears throat> now, for example, to see what a record is, Take a payroll system, for example, where a record for a particular employee would be his or her identification number, his or her name, address, and so on, age, whatever. As you will see, all these things, the ID number, the name, and the address of that particular employee is grouped together. Now, you can think that will be very easy to write that as a class, as a struct, right? So a struct employee type would contain an ID number, a name, surname, address, things like that. And then we can even go further and assign an array with these variable, with these different um, initial instantiations of the structure for all the employees in my company. Okay. And we call each of those a record. Now a file, like the binary files that we're going to write, is actually a group of these records. Okay. And a database would then be a group of the related files. So, for example, I save all my employees of one branch. I've got a company with numerous branches in it. All my employees associated with one branch is stored in a binary file that goes somewhere in the database. All my employees with another branch is stored in another file, and that's also submitted to the database. Okay, so one central database containing different files in the files there are these um, records, and each record groups a certain amount of um, groups, a certain groups related information, like, for example, a struct representing an employee type. Okay, and on the smallest level, this bit of information we call a bit. That's essentially a zero or a one. Okay, so years is what we see over here. It's just a, a graphical representation of what I've just said. So at the lowest level there at the top, you guys will see, um, at the lowest level there at the top, you guys are going to see a one. And that is a bit. It can be a one or it can be a zero. If I group these bits as into a group of eight, I add eight of these, I call these a byte, okay? And this, for example, this binary number over here, that represents the character Q. So, and that character is the first one in this field called Quentin, which is the name of the employee. Then all the names, like for example, this forms part of a bigger thing called uh, a, a record, where that's the first name, that's the surname maybe, and that's is age. And that's the record. Um, and then all of this is added to a file. Okay. And in our example, you could write this information in an ASCII format. So you could write a file that you can read yourself in Notepad or WordPad or, or whatever. But in this lecture, and maybe also we're going to touch on that in the next set of slides, is the benefit of, of using binary files really comes to play when you put records into the file and access records from the file. Okay, so, but before we can do this, um, we need to have some form, uh, we need to have some form of unique identifier for each of my 
of my entries, each of my fields. So for example, each of my employees, I need to keep track where, empl where employee 200 is and 215. The reason is so that we don't overwrite content. So for example, here you will see that the record requires some form of a unique key. So identifies record to facilitate the retrieval of specific records from a file, okay? So in this one, each of these employee records that we write to the file contains an, a unique identifier. A sequential file, and the sequential random components to a file, those words are going to be clear when we look at the next set of loads, uh, uh, the next set of slides. That um, where we look at random accessing of files. But for now, in this lecture, just consider that each of the entries that we read from the file and also write to the file will be done sequentially. That, that is one after each other. But this unique identifier that they show you over here in the first column, that is used to quickly identify which record I am referring to. Okay, so the question is, how are we going to write information to a binary file. So the first thing that we are going to do is um, we're going to look at the routines that's made available to us from the I.O., the standard I.O. library. Remember the standard I.O. library is what you guys include at the top of your, um, of your uh, C programs. So we have these functions called if write, if read. Um, if write essentially transfers byte, uh, transfers the amount of memory uh, bytes from memory into a file, and if read then transfers the bytes from a file again into memory. Okay, so if write writes information from the um, from memory that your program resides in into the file, and if read reads it again from file into memory. So, but that's for those routines are specifically for binary files, not ASCII I/O files. Remember, in those ones. From the previous example that we looked at when we did ASCII files, those was if printf, if scanf, things like that, right? If gets, that gets memory from a file. These if write and if read works with binary files. So here's an example. Um, if write takes the address of a variable. Essentially, that gives us the location in memory where the bytes are residing that I want to transfer into my file. It then I need to specify how many bytes to transfer, okay? So in order to, to say that, remember an int has a certain amount, uh, has a certain size, four bytes. A double might have different size, eight bytes or 16 bytes, depending on whether it's single or double precision. So I need to say that I'm going to transfer variables of a specific type, for example, here is int, and I need to say how many bytes are, is associated with that variable. In order to calculate that very quickly, I use this function called size of. So size of int returns a certain size that's associated with how many bytes are used to store an int. And this number one over here uh, if we look at arrays, that's the number of elements that we are going to transfer. So, for example, if I give this if write the address of the first of the array name, right, that's going to be point to the first number. So, if I say five and it was an integer array, I'm going to transfer five elements from that integer array into the file. That is the last argument over here. The file we identify using that if pointer. So. That if pointer was the file pointer that's also featured in the ASCII file reading and writing that I showed you guys a bit earlier. Yeah. Yeah, for example, a, a variable. Yeah, so you're going to transfer one variable, one number. Yeah. Okay, so as I said, this is essentially a recap of that. Size of returns the size in bytes of the object um, in parentheses. So for example, I now have a structure that contains a name, an address, an age, an ID number. I need to calculate the size of that structure. And in order to do so, 
I still use the size of function and I pass the type there. Remember, if I can quickly go back to the previous slide. So over here, I passed size of, I passed int. Now remember, a struct, this, my struct, that is also just a variable type that may contain different types, like an int, a double, whatever. But I need, I need to tell, I need to calculate its size. So for that, I, I can also use this size of um, function. And here, you can see that you are also only transferring, for example, one entry of that struct. So if I'm going to read um, from my file into an object that is of this type, my struct, I'm going to have a, a call to a function called fread that's very similar to if write. It also takes the object, the address of the, the object in memory into which the data will be written. And over here, it assumes that that very position, that is a pointer pointing to memory of type my struct. Okay, so here is a reading and writing arrays of structures. So as I said, the only difference between the calls over and in this case, and that of a single variable, is that the second last argument would be the number of elements that you are reading and writing from memory. Okay, and over here we've got an example. So I thought a nice way for us to go through it is for me to just implement this part and, or a simplified version thereof, perhaps, um, step by step. You guys can either open your editor and follow me or just follow me on the screen as we do it. And we are going to look at how are we going to write data into a binary file. So for that, I'm going to open my Eclipse. I'm going to close this project. I've already got a binary files project open and an MTC file over here. So, I'm going to define my standard libraries. Remember this standard IO is needed for my F write and my F read. And now I'm going to define a structure. And I'm going to define this coordinate structure over here. So this coordinate essentially structure to store X and Y coordinates. Uh, over here I have, and remember when we talk about coordinates, what type of variable do you guys think would be useful to store it in? I already typed it out there. It's a double precision variable. So X and double Y. Okay. Now, um, I obviously have to type diff my struct over here so that I can use, I can declare variables of its type. Okay, that's my main. And as I told you guys in some of the practicals, it's always useful to see when your program is finishing. So I print out finished just before the main. Okay, let's build it and make sure that everything runs fine. So, or that's little, this little part runs fine. So everything runs nice, it says finished. Okay, first thing is I need to declare some form of a file name. And in order to do that, I'm just going to say file name, I'm going to say 20 characters, okay, is equal to coord.dat, something like that, okay. Um, and what I'm going to do then is I need to also declare a pointer to my file. And important here, it's of type file, but I think you guys should be okay with that for now, or by now, because you've seen this no, not only now in the binary file handling, but also in the text file handling. Um, okay, so let's define some form of a coordinate, okay? And this coordinate is called vertices. And vertices, it's 
represents the coordinates of a triangle. So it's got three, remember a triangle's got three points, three vertices, so let's define something like this. Vertices, it's got, yeah, three. And just to sort eclipse out, let's type in this set buff. Yeah, STD out and zero over here. Okay, now, we are not going to follow the slides completely. We're not going to read the file name. We've already specified that the file name is coordinate.dat, but obviously you guys can read that in from the user if you want to. Now, let's open our file. Using the F open routine. For writing to it. But very important and a very big difference between the binary file writing and the ASCII file writing is this little B that features there. This B behind the W, if it was just like that, that would mean open the file for ASCII file writing. That adding that B tells, uh, tells the compiler that it is in binary file mode. Okay. That's not right, that's right. Okay, now, after reading my, after opening my file, remember, this F open routine can return null. If it returns null, that means something is the matter with, with the code. Either the hard disk is full, or if you open it for reading, the file didn't exist or something like that. So you need to test that case. In order to test that case, we do it like this. If C, if pointer is equal to null, what does this tell us? Problem with file, with opening file. And we are going to return. Or let's print if an print an error. So we say error file could not be opened. Okay. Else, let's for now say let's just print if file was opened successfully for. Oops. Writing, spelling mistake. Oops. That's okay. For writing. And that one prints out that the file could not be opened. Okay. Now, um, and let's just do that. But before we could do, before we continue, remember it's very important to also close the file. And we can only close the file if it's been opened. If it's not, that's gonna result in an error as well. So if close, and we give it our pointer again. And I see in the practicals that some of you guys forget this step. Remember, it's very important to close the file to give its, um, yeah, to make sure that it can be read again by other processes, other programs, for example, that want to manipulate it. All right, now let's see if this thing compiles. So what do you guys see that I, I'm doing here in my programming uh, methodology as well? What I'm doing here is I'm not coding everything up and making, and then at the end compiling, and then I've got a lot of errors that I've got to work through. You do little steps at a, at a time, even if it's just to get the main running, writing something out, then little step. Before I start writing files, I make sure that my F open works. Things like that, right? So that really makes your life as a programmer easier. If you do little bits, little functional parts, test it, then go on. Okay. So the only warning, if I look at my compiler output, the only warning that I'd got was that I had an unused variable called vertices. So, and that's okay, because I've, I haven't used my vertices at the moment. Okay, now, um, 
what are we going to do? So what we can do is we can read some vertices from the user. Let's maybe see if we can do that. So if my, my file was now opened correctly, I'm going to read some vertices in. So I'm going to say printf, please specify the vertices of the triangle. <clears throat> and to do so, I'm just going to, I know there's three vertices, so I can loop from one to three. So I, I start i is equal to one i less than or equal to 3, i plus plus. Okay. And I can prompt my user, enter coordinate for vertex Okay. Let's see here, that i isn't declared, so let's declare it over here. Let's say int i. Okay. So i loops from 1 to 3, I ask the user to enter the coordinate, and then I obviously have to read the, the values from the, from the user. Um, okay, and I'm going to store it in my structure. This is my structure over here, an x and a y. So I only have a two-dimensional grid with x and y coordinates. So to do that, I'm going to use the scanf routine, scanf percentage if, no, alif, that scans a double, percentage alif, and I'm going to store it into my vertex x and my vertex y components over here. Okay. But do I have, have I already defined my vertex? No. Let's define it. And I think that features only later on. So I'm going to store the coordinates x and y into my vertex. And my vertex is a variable that is pointing to this structure. Or not pointing to, it's a variable of this structure type that contains an x and a y. So if I want to store its memory, uh, if I want to store a coordinate in its x component, then I give it the memory location of my variable vertex and I access the x member or the x field of it, right? And then same for the y component over here. Okay, um, <coughs> why don't we do this? Okay, so let's run it and let's see, let's build it again. Okay, and let's run it to this point. Please enter coordinates for vertex one, five, and four. For vertex two is six and three, and for vertex three is eight and say nine. So funny looking triangle, but yeah. Okay, let's make it a little bit beautiful, uh, nicer, the, the printf statements over here. Okay, so I'm reading my, my, my vertex information over here into these variables x and y and now I want to save this into my file. So let's just open the directory where I'm working at the moment. I can do that using my, my a file explorer, okay, ah, it's called 
called Windows Explorer. So this Windows Explorer, I go to my directory that Eclipse, my own directory that Eclipse is set to. So it's over here. Let's see over here. Okay, and as you can see, it's already opened the coordinate.dat file. Um, that was when I tested the empty writing of files, but let's delete that file, okay? So there's nothing out here, as you can see. Um, and I'm going to, I haven't written this information yet to the file. I've only been reading it, so let's write to the file now. Okay. So if I want to write it to the file, if I go back to my slides, I can use my F write routine, okay? And what did it tell us? It told us that I need to pass it the value of the memory address where this thing is, the variable is stored. So this is stored at vertex, okay? Um, oh, but I need to obviously put this F write inside the for loop. Otherwise, I'm only going to save the last vertex information. Okay, so I'm going to, as I read the vertex from the user, I store it in my file. So I use F write vertex size of coordinate. Okay, and how many do I write? Only one. And my file pointer, CF pointer. Over here. Okay, and at the, when I'm finished with my vertex information, I close my file again. Very important. All right, so let's build it. And as you guys can see, if I can just go back to my, there's no date, there's no file coordinate dot that over there. So I build it again, there's nothing to build. I run it. It's gonna tell me, please enter the coordinates for vertex one, let's say five and three. That's now 53, sorry, 6 and 7, 9 and 15. It's probably a funny looking triangle, but that's okay. Each coordinate, each vertex takes an X and a Y coordinate. Let's look now. Okay, now as you guys can see, there is a coordinate.dat file that is 48 bytes. Okay, so if we can just more or less do a sanity check, so 48 bytes. What is 48 divided by? by three, what would that give us? 16, right? So 16, and if we divide that by two, that would be eight bytes, okay? So it's more or less what I expected, why? Because my struct contains two values here, a double size eight, and a, and a let's, well, let's print out, we could also do this. Let's print out the size of this structure. So we can say print if I think size of so we're going to do size of this coordinate. We want to know how big is this structure. And I think it'll be stored as an elif. Let's see size of coordinate. Okay, I hope this works. Warned. Okay, maybe just a float. Okay, ah, I think it's an integer, it's not a double. There we go. So size of returns an integer, obviously it returns the size in bytes of the particular variable. So, and we're just going to, um, we don't gonna do the other part, so we're just gonna return here. So, or that would be return zero. Okay, just want to stop. We just want to see what the size of routine is giving us. I run it. 
So size of coordinate would be 16. Okay? So what we've done now is we see that each entry, if I declare a variable of type coordinate, it has 16 bytes. So if I write three of those to a file, that would be the bytes that I'm looking for. Okay? That will correspond more or less to my file size over here. Okay, so, um, yeah. Okay, so that's the makeup of this coordinate.dat file. Consists of, well, there's nothing now in it because obviously we stop the program termination over here. Let's just uncomment that because we want our program to run through. And that is how you write a memory location into file. Okay, so that will write it sequentially, it will write it one after the other. So if we can, let's just quickly see how we're going to read information from the file. So what I can do then is, um, in order to do that, I'm just going to use an F read also. Okay, so let's just do it underneath this board. Let's say we are now going to read information from the binary file and it's sequential access we're reading one after the other so this is the same file name everything um, <clears throat> I'm going to read it and I'm going to store my information into an array of call that I call vertices so this would be this array that I have to find here okay so this first part writes the information to the file and this last, this second part now reads it from that particular file. Okay. Um, let me open my file again. So, but now I've got to open it in the correct mode because I'm going to read from it. So, C if pointer is equal to if open. I can use my same file name that I declared at the top over here. It's the same file name over here. Coordinate dot dat. Differences, that's it. Okay. And how am I going to open it now? I'm going to open it with an R that says read in binary format. I need to test it, obviously, if C, F, pointer, ah, sorry, if it is null again, if it's null, then I need to say error could not open file for reading. Okay. Um, otherwise, else, I could open it. And then, what am I going to do? I want to read all the information from that file. So for me to do that, I know that it is stored. I stored vertex information where each entry was a struct of type that contained two double precision variables, two double variables, an X and a Y component. So I need to know that beforehand. I also need to know how many entries did I store. So that is very important when you work with binary files, is that you have to have some form of knowledge about the file structure for you to implement a read routine. Okay, so I know that I can use exactly the same for loop. So I start at zero. I read I read three elements, so that's i less than zero, that's zero, one, and two, and I increment my pointer, ach, my, my variable over here. So that's my for loop, and I'm going to issue this if read routine. Okay, so where am I going to store it? I'm going to store it into this array. I give it the first, the first um, entry, okay, the address of the first entry into the array. I need to know how big my entries are. So for that, I use the size of routine again that we used. Remember, size of coordinate returns 16 bytes. So this, in effect, would be just the size of each of the individual entries into that binary file. I read one, and I say F pointer. Okay, I give it my file pointer over here. Then um, I can print out that 
those entries. I can say vertex percentage D vertex D um, let's print it in with a bit of formatting. It's double value so that's why I use the percentage LF and I give it a bit of a format specifier so that's the point one that's the, the decimal um, the numbers of decimals. And I say that my vertex is called I plus one, remember, because I'm reading from zero. And why am I reading from zero? Can any of you guys guess why this I starts at zero and not at one? Yeah, because the memory of the array starts at zero, right? C, remember in C, if you look at that vertex array, those arrays, array indexing in C starts from zero onwards. Okay, uh, so I say I plus one, and I now access the X and the Y component of the variables, the members of that particular struct. So it is vertex, sorry, um, Ah, it's vert vertices. Sorry, I store it in vertices. I dot x, and I store it in vertices i dot y. Okay. And then important at the end, please remember, close your files again over there and I finish so theoretically what this program should do when I build it and run it is that it should first prompt me for entering some vertex information from the user then it'll store it into a file coordinate dot dat with the name coordinate dot dat I can expect that file to be of about 48 bytes big because each of the entries is of type of this type struct coordinate and it's got two double, uh, two double variables, right? And the total size of this is 16 bytes. Okay, so now I write that to a file and then in the second part of the code over here is I open the file again using an if open routine, but I open it for reading and I open it in binary mode. I first check whether it's null or not, whether there was an issue. Otherwise, I read all the entries from that file. And very critical is that I had to know something about the structure of the file before I attempted this, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to read it correctly. Okay. So in practice, what people usually do in software is they write a little bit of information of the file into a header block. Okay. So the first bit of the file contains how many elements does it have, what type of elements, things like that. Um, otherwise, the programmer would have to know intricate details like this, for example, there's three elements. Each element is of this particular type. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's build it and let's run it. So my coordinates for vertex one, let's say it's five and six, vertex two, seven and eight, and vertex three, nine and ten. And there we go. So it reads. Let's look in the directory. There's my coordinate dot dat. It's of 48 bytes, so it contains the correct amount of information that I'm expecting. Um, and if I look at my output over here, so I still see all my vertex information was correct. Five and six, seven and eight, nine and ten. All that information I read from my file. Let's just quickly, before we um, wrap this up, I want to show you guys something. I, for example, if I rename this, uh, no it won't. I can for example now perhaps not write it and only read it here. So I comment this out, I comment that out and I'm only going to open, try and open it for reading but I'm going to rename it. 
before I do so. So I call it coordinate dot that, that dot. Okay, let's just call it something like that. So my f my program is going to look for a file that is called something like that, but it won't be able to find it. And we're going to see now what is it going to do if it cannot find it. So I'm going to build it, and let's run it. It prints out this error over here. Could not f could not open file for reading, and then finished right at the end. Okay, so. That is why we need to test that file pointer for null. Okay, guys, I think um, that wraps this part up. We're not going to start with the binary, uh, with the random access file writing and reading. I had a couple of you guys asked in the practical or the project, how can I check my binary files? You can check your binary files by implementing a read routine as well and writing the content out to the screen. And then you will be able to see Okay, am I writing all the information that I'm giving my program correctly into the file? You can verify that by just implementing a very simple read routine like I'm showing you guys over here. Okay.